Hey guys, UFC 201 Lawler versus Woodley. Last event in July, um, and the first one in the month hasn't even taken place yet. So in the description, I have linked my prediction videos to or for uh, Fight Night Dos Santos versus Alvarez Tough 23 finale UFC 200 as well as a UFC 200 collaboration video with best MMA picks and MMA savant um, UFC Fight Night Sioux Falls uh, Lineker versus McDonald UFC on Fox Home versus Shevchenko and uh, right now we're doing uh, 201 so check out all those videos if you're interested um, getting them out early, uh, and then, uh, we'll have some time to do the next one, um, ahead of time, fight night, uh, Rodriguez versus Caceres in, uh, Salt Lake City, I believe. Um, so man, uh, July's been crazy and it, uh, you know, the first event hasn't even taken place yet. Um, follow me on Twitter, uh, also linked in the description. Uh, yeah, to UFC 201. Um, I'm not excited for this. Uh, two title fights, but two, I think, one-sided matchups uh, in both the title fights. And then Ed Herman versus Nikita Krylov on the main card. I mean, uh, come on, that's not pay-per-view worthy. So just kind of a, a weak pay-per-view, I think. Uh, prelim card doesn't do anything for me so uh you know i don't want to um i don't want to uh talk about it too much but you know it's just for me it's just kind of uh you know the problem with having so many events so close together they're trying to throw a pay-per-view right at the end of the month uh you know after five events in the month before it and you're just kind of left with this uh two title fights that you know, you know, don't aren't I don't think are going to be competitive at all, and you know, just a an undercard and prelim card that uh, aren't very interesting. Uh, but a lightweight Cesar Arzamendia versus Damian Brown. I um, actually had to watch uh, Damian Brown's last fight, and again, I you know I I'm not going to sit down and uh, watch these full fights. I just uh, kind of skimmed through it, saw pieces uh, of the fight, but. Um, yeah, I have to take Damian Brown. Arzamendia, uh, he got a quick TKO win on Tough Line America in his first fight. And then uh, I think he got submitted by the winner, Enrique Barzola. And then fought Polo Reyes uh, in the finale um, in the UFC. And he got knocked out by him, which I thought was surprising because Polo Reyes had shown a suspect chin on the show. Arzamendia got the TKO win. Um, but Arzamendia got knocked out. Um, I have to take Damian Brown, um, who had a tough fight with Alan uh, Patrick in his UFC debut. Um, and I didn't think there was much of a skill differential. It just looked like Patrick was a massive lightweight and really had a size and athletic advantage on him. And he was uh, just able to take him down. Uh, hold him down on the ground, win some scrambles. But Brown had some moments uh, where he took Patrick down, got off some ground and pound. He looked tough. Um, Arzamendia, I don't think, has that grappling game. And even on the feet, um, you know, I thought he was, uh, you know, an effective, uh, aggressive striker. But I think we saw in that Polo Reyes fight, um, you know, can't really, can't can't really compete like that at a high level. So uh, I'm gonna take Brown here to take him down, uh, out grapple Arzmendia uh, for a decision win. All right, at heavyweight, Anthony Hamilton versus Damian Grabowski. I'm taking Hamilton, uh, it should be a terrible fight. Grabowski um, just got washed by Derek Lewis. Um, and Anthony Hamilton is not a high level heavyweight. Uh, you know, a, really a, a kind of a, the upper, tier of, of the lower level heavyweights but you know he has a decent clinch game uh can get takedowns uh not a, a very good striker um but we saw against a, a powerful uh one shot ko striker in omulanchek that hamilton uh 
can use the clinch to um, avoid the power. He can uh, work takedowns and uh, just outwork guys. So um, I'm going to take uh, Hamilton um, to get the win here over Grabowski. Um, I'll say a decision win. All right, Walter Wade, Michael Graves versus Bojan Velikovic. I don't like this matchup. I don't know why they couldn't give uh, you know Graves a more relevant fighter. Velikovic did win his last fight over Alessio Di Chirico, and I re rewatched that one again, just pieces of it. Uh, but it was such an uneventful fight that I feel like either guy you know could have won that. Um, Velikovic was uh, backing up, circling out uh, a lot of the fight. And uh, just kind of landed landed some counters. Um, but it was really a, a lackluster fight from both guys. And Graves, um, he's really redeemed himself from his time on Ultimate Fighter. I feel um, he's looked completely different. You know, got a really solid win over Vicente Luque. Uh, has a really good time takedown. Transitions well uh, from uh, striking to wrestling. Um, just has a good work rate. And then against Randy Brown... Uh, did the same thing, um, you know, nullified the submission game of Brown and uh, just took him down, uh, pounded on him, took his back, choked him out. Um, I don't see why he can't at least uh, outwork Velikovic for a decision who just looked very limited in his offense against Alessio Di Chirico, um, who I think is probably a way lower level fighter than Graves. So uh, I'm taking Graves to... Uh, I don't know decision or submission, but to get the win here. All right, at Bantamweight, uh, Francisco Rivera versus Eric Perez. Uh, this is a tough fight. This is probably one of the more interesting ones on the card for me. Um, Perez should have the grappling advantage, uh, and that's where Rivera has always struggled in his career. And I think Rivera will have the striking advantage. Um, Rivera's takedown defense, I think it's improved a bit. Um, in the Faber fight, I th thought he was doing a good job of using knees uh, when Faber would try to close the distance um, and doing a good job of keeping Faber outside. Uh, but then the, the Brad Pickett fight, a guy who um, you know just wants to bite down and brawl and come forward, uh, he was able to close the distance and uh, you know hit some takedowns uh, from inside and. Uh, land some hard shots on him. I know a lot of people thought Rivera won that fight. I think I uh, agreed uh, with the decision with Pickett winning. Um, yeah, but on the feet, uh, Perez, I thought he didn't look so great against um, his last fight against uh, Taylor Lapolis. Uh, he did win on the takedowns, but I didn't think he looked great on the feet. We've also seen him lose a, a striking battle to Takeya Mitsugaki. Um the guy does have a, a decent, uh, you know, well-rounded game uh, where he can uh, go from striking to wrestling. Uh, and that is my worry that he will out-wrestle Rivera. Um, but Rivera is a really dangerous striker. I mean, the knockout win over Alex Caceres was really impressive. Um, and I have to, I'm going to take Rivera here against Perez at... I just think he's really hungry for a win after the you know him getting screwed in the Faber fight and the Brad Pickett fight being a bit controversial. Um, I think he's you know he's a really a guy. He's a guy who's really worked hard to uh, really improve. He's come a long way um, from when he was cut from the UFC, and uh, I think he's going to do enough to create separation here to keep it on the feet. And from there, I think he's. Uh, just a way better Muay Thai striker, you know, more diverse strikes. So I like Rivera in this fight. All right, at welterweight, Jorge Masvidal versus CR Bahadur Zada. Um, Masvidal, if he can't get the win here, I mean, that would be extremely surprising and very tragic. Um, so I think he definitely gets the win. Uh, Bahadur Zada looked improved uh, in the Brandon Thatch fight. You know, hit the takedown uh, a couple times and you know, submitted him, and you know that's a big difference from him getting out grappled by John Howard. Um, but Masvidal is an elite fighter, has been fighting really tough guys, and just hasn't, uh, you know, hasn't had uh, the scorecards go his way. The Iaquinta fight, the Larkin fight, the Henderson fight. Well, I thought he lost the Larkin and the um, Henderson fight. 
those are all extremely close. He probably could have gotten the decision, and he's still an elite fighter. Um, he's really good everywhere in the clinch. Uh, you know, has a really good jab, has uh, uh, good combinations, good grappler and wrestler. Um, I think uh, he probably finishes Bahadur Zada, who um, still seems pretty limited in his game. Um, I think it, Masvidal should have a big technical advantage on the feet. And, uh, you know, it's just been fighting really high-level competition where Bahadur Zada has a few fights against, uh, you know, fairly either mid-level or low-level guys. So uh, going with uh, Masvidal here, big. Um, a light heavyweight, Ed Herman versus Nikita Krylov. Another uh, really interesting matchup. I don't like that it's on the main card, but um, I think a lot of people are going to favor Krylov here. Ed Herman is old. Um, he's slow. And Krylov just uh, you know goes pedal to the metal. Uh, I think he could uh, you know really put it on Herman right out of the gate in this fight. Um, get off to a fast start and either, you know, knock Herman out or get him to the ground, um, catch him in a submission. But I think Herman, uh, I think Herman is, uh, too tough for that, honestly, especially, uh, when it comes to the submissions, unless he's rocked, which definitely can happen. I think the guy's got a weak chin, uh, you know, Derek Brunson just easily knocked this guy out. Um, very quickly in the first round, but um, Ed Herman is a really skilled uh, submission artist, um, even if we haven't seen it uh, lately from him in the UFC. But, uh, um, you know, go watch the Kyle Noak fight back in 2011, I think, and Ed Herman was doing some crazy uh, uh, leg lock attacks, and um, I think, or he was going for like a arm bar, on both sides of his guard, and I think eventually uh, got him with the inside heel hook. Uh, the guy's really a technician when it comes to submissions. I don't see Krylov, you know, jumping on a guillotine like he did uh, um, the last guy he fought. Uh, uh, what was his name? The guy from uh, Tough Brazil and Strike Force, uh, Hoger Marcos Rogério de Lima. I don't see him just jumping on a, a submission like that unless he hurts Herman, which is possible. But Herman uh, has had competitive fights with uh, more skilled guys, Rafael Natal. Um, you know, the last fight against Tim Boach, uh, I thought he really kind of showed that while he's still, I think he's still old and kind of over the hill, he still has something left. Uh, was able to land those uh, knees in the clinch against uh, Boach and put him out. Um, so I like Herman here. I'm going to go with the old veteran, a little run down, but I think he's still more skilled. I think he's going to be able to weather that storm and then make it a grinding fight from there. Uh, you know, put Krylov against the fence, um, take him down, and uh, really went on technique and skill. And Krylov, the guys he's ran over, um, you know, I wouldn't say that they're as skilled as Herman. You know, guys like Francis Mar Bahoso, um, even he even lost to Soa Pulele in his debut, but, um, you know, Cody Donovan, those kinds of guys. Uh, Walt Harris, these are not high-level skilled fighters. Uh, and Ed Herman, um, while he hasn't really gone to the top of the game, has been in there with high-level competition and is a, a skilled mixed martial artist. So I think everyone's going to be really quick to write off Ed Herman, but I do think he's the smarter pick here. All right, a woman's strawweight, Rose Namajunas versus Karolina Kovalkovic. Um, Kovalkovic is good. Uh, seems like a solid kickboxer. Uh, I wouldn't say she's great, though. I mean, especially her last fight against Heather Jo Clark, where she went pretty clearly. Just didn't seem willing enough to chase the finish, not uh, forceful enough with her offense. I think that's really going to cost her here against Nami Yunus. Um, and Nami Yunus, I think, definitely needs a lot of work before she can uh, legitimately contend for the title. Um, you know, barely got by Tisha Torres. Uh, but I just think she can, uh, she can throw more volume. Um, I think she's a little bit more of a technical, uh, striker at distance than Kovalkovic. And then the grappling, um, Kovalkovic, uh, I think she, 
she took down uh, Randa Marcos in in her in uh, her debut fight. I could be wrong about that, but um, I think Nami Yunus should have an advantage on the ground. Uh, and yeah, I just think it's gonna be Nami Yunus's you know willingness to uh, chase the finish, um, do more damage. Uh, that's going to win her the fight here. Kovalkovic, I think, uh, seems like she's only focused on winning on technique, and I don't think that's enough against, uh, you know, a more proven, uh, capable finisher like Nami Yunus. So I think Nami Yunus uh, is going to get the win here. I'll probably take her uh, by decision. All right, at welterweight, Matt Brown versus Jake Ellenberger. Um, I don't know how you can't pick uh matt brown i mean i'll be shocked if ellenberger gets the win um i think brown is i think he's you know his age is starting to show a little bit um you know looking maybe a step slower and his chin maybe um a little more suspect uh means uh tagged him with some hard shots but brown survived came back uh you know to get the finish um but Ellenberger, the guy, just seems mentally and physically broken. Can still land a hard shot, you know. Cracked uh, Tarek Safadin at the end, right at the end of their fight, um, with a real hard shot. Dropped Stephen Thompson, uh, but you know, got knocked out by Stephen Thompson. Had a terrible performance against Kelvin Gastelum and Brown. Um, you know, the the mental part of the game. Uh, you know, the his effort is never lacking. Um, you know, even though he's had setbacks now to Hendricks and um, Damian Maya, even in the Maya fight, I thought he did a really good job to survive as long as he did. Um, you know, the guy, uh, he never loses for a lack of effort or preparation. And I think he's still adding skills uh, to this point in his career. Um, so I definitely like him here over Ellenberger, who also, you know, gets very kind of uh, hesitant and gun shy when guys start putting the pressure on him when things don't go his way like in the Lawler fight he kind of shut down um especially the Rory McDonald fight and Brown is a you know when he smells blood he he goes for the kill uh so I think Brown is going to get on him early here um just a more comfortable striker than Ellenberger will let his hands go more um Ellenberger does have the power, I think, but, uh, you know, Brown time and time again has come back from, you know, the, the brink of being defend, of being finished. Um, so I think if he was finished here, he would survive and uh, just pour it on Ellenberger, who would, uh, you know, be the first one to break. So I like Brown here, and I think he gets a TKO finish, second or third round. All right, flyweight Demetrius Johnson uh, versus Wilson Hayes uh, for the belt. And... I, I'm just uh, kind of sick of it now. Uh, not that I don't like Johnson, but uh, just that there's you know no real competitive uh, fights out there for him. Um, Wilson Hayes is good. Um, you know, I thought he had a really nice win over Ortiz, which I called. But I mean, is Hayes gonna out wrestle Johnson? No. Uh, out grapple him. Uh, I don't think so. Maybe more decorated and definitely more decorated, uh, you know, from sport jujitsu, but I don't see him out grappling Johnson. Who's had how many submission wins now in the UFC. Isn't he going to outstrike him? Definitely not. So, um, I just don't see Hayes, uh, winning anywhere. Um, I don't know that this is much different from any of Johnson's uh, other fights in terms of, uh, his opponent having an advantage, over him and be more of a threat. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know that this is different from the Cariasso fight in terms of, you know, the opponent being a threat to Johnson. I would say Cejudo was probably, uh, Cejudo or Horiguchi were the guys that um, should have had an advantage uh, in at least one area over Johnson, but, um, you know, finished both those guys. So I think Johnson uh, runs over him and you know, Wilson Hayes, this was a guy who was nailed with a head kick against Joby Sanchez late in their fight, nearly put out, um, and even, you know, took Sanchez's back early in that fight standing, couldn't finish him, uh, had a loss to Yuri Alcantara, and this guy also lost to Formiga recently, didn't he? Let me check his record here.
Yeah, I lost to Formiga two fights ago. Um, so I don't think he's going to have a, even a ground advantage against uh, Johnson. I think Johnson just kind of runs over him, uh, you know, on the feet. He should have a, a real speed and technical advantage. Uh, I think he just runs over uh, Hayes. And then uh, the title fight, uh, or the main event, um, at Walter Waite for the belt, Robbie Lawler versus Tyron Woodley. Another fight that I just don't see being competitive really at all. Um, I have to take Lawler. I think he gets a late finish. Um, you know, Tyron Woodley for a guy who, you know, is so explosive and came out uh, so fast in some of his fights in the Koscheck fight and the Carlos Condit fight. Um, and he was, you know, a, a big explosive power puncher. Uh, the guy just, uh, I don't know what it is, but the Gastelum fight, the McDonald fight, he just seems to want to circle with his back to the fence and, you know, try to counter guys, and he's just not very good at it. I thought he lost the Gastelum fight as well, and, you know, both those fights, uh, you know, looked identical. I don't know if he's purposefully doing that or if he just has such a problem, you know, such a footwork and problem with managing distance when guys come forward on him that he just you know freezes up and he starts circling but um you know Lawler uh the way he came forward against McDonald and I thought you know is uh even though he doesn't have a really wide arsenal of strikes keeps it pretty basic with a straight and a cross um or sorry a, a jab and and a jab in a straight um you know he's very effective with that game and i thought his strikes looked very accurate accurate against mcdonald uh, a lot more so than in the either of the hendrix fights um so i could see him just coming forward and uh you know putting the heat on uh woodley uh and if he does that i think uh woodley probably goes down late in the fight i mean woodley is not gonna pose a technical threat like mcdonald did um, in their fight, I think, you know, Lawler kind of passed the biggest test already. And I thought he was starting to crack, uh, you know, in the in the Condit fight. I think he really struggled with that uh, technical game of Condit. But Woodley doesn't have that. He doesn't have, uh, you know, the, the angles and, um, you know, he, he doesn't have a really wide array of strikes. Um, he was just relying on that power, those big shots. Uh, Lawler is very durable, and I think he uh, beats him at that game all day. The one area where I think Woodley uh, would have a real shot at uh, scoring an upset here is if he chooses to fight in the clinch, uh, really presses the wrestling game. Uh, Lawler does have a good t takedown defense, but you know Hendricks was able to get him down, um, especially at key moments in, in that first fight at the end in the fifth round is how he won the decision. Um, Ellenberger even took this guy down. He got uh, back up uh, right away. Um, but he can be taken down. And, you know, Woodley did that, I think, earlier earlier in his strike force career. I think it was uh, Jordan Meehan or uh, some other guy, or Paul Daly, where he just really used the clinch uh, to really avoid uh, a brawl and, um, you know, went on position, um, really seal uh, the win. Um, so I think he could have success doing that against Lawler. Um, Lawler hasn't really had an opponent who's uh, done that to him. But, I mean, if this guy was hesitant uh, against Gastelum and McDonald, I don't see how he has the confidence to, um, you know, get in, in that close uh, fight in that range against Lawler. So, um, you know, I think Lawler presses forward, uses that jab cross, uh, kind of picks Woodley apart. Um, you know, for the early rounds and then late, I think, uh, Woodley starts to fade and, uh, Lawler turns it up, gets the TKO finish. All right, guys, those are my predictions for UFC 201, uh, Lawler versus Woodley. Again, check the description for a link to my Twitter account, uh, and, uh, links to my videos for Dos Santos versus Alvarez, Tough 23 finale, UFC 200, uh, 200 video with uh, best MMA picks, and MMA savant, fight night, uh, McDonald versus Lineker, uh, UFC on Fox, home versus Shevchenko, 
And then uh, I think I'm going to take a little break, pretty uh, run down from uh, all of this. And um, I'll be back uh, in a little bit with uh, Fight Night Rodriguez versus Caceres. Um, thanks, guys. Um, I was going to do my most confident picks, but I don't want to... I want to take some time to think about that and they'll be posted in the description and then I'll uh, start being prepared for that uh, so I can do it in my videos in the future. Thanks guys. Take, take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.